It's like bacteria. It's like diseases. Spirits do this. If you hang around somebody that's got a spirit in them, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to be influenced by that same demon spirit. And you keep on. Before you know it, you're going to go into the activity they're into. How many of you ever seen that? God knows better than we know. Amen. And in kids, it, they were before the age of accountability. That's between him, them and God. God took care of the children. However, they had spiritual activity going on because of their parents. So it looks cruel, but it was done to save a bloodline. And to keep a bloodline, the Lord Jesus Christ would come through. Amen? Amen. That's the same thing that happened in Noah's day. The Nephilim had come down when the fallen angels had come down, had relations with women, tried to corrupt the whole bloodline of mankind and almost succeeded. There was only Noah that found grace. His eight souls were saved. Eight souls were saved because they were of his family. He found grace. So the enemy was almost successful. You believe it? I mean, you see that? So now he's saying, get rid of that whole camp. Don't bring them into your camp. What did Saul do? I think I know better than God. I'm smarter than the Almighty. So I'm going to bring Agag. I think it was Agag. I'm going to bring the king with me. I'm going to bring the animals to sacrifice to the Lord. Polluted animals, of course. <laughs> it's not going to be his. It's going to be part of the spoils of war. Get it? He ain't sacrificing anything. Many people in the church today do the same thing. I'm going to bring an offering. I'm going to give some money. But I don't want to be obedient to what the Lord has called me to do. This is what was going on with Saul. Rebellion. So he's in complete rebellion. So he's asking God about a situation that arose. How many times, you know, when you get in rebellion, all of a sudden something starts happening. Maybe it's a chastening. And then you say, Lord, I need to know some information. But you don't want to come out of your rebellion. <laughs> Saul didn't want to come out of his rebellion, but he still wanted God to protect him and give him wisdom and understanding in all situations. Well, the Philistines that surrounded him, he's in trouble. Be like if you go to the doctor, the doctor says, Look, man, that cancer's all over your body. The Philistines have surrounded your heart. You got it all over you. You got two months to leave. Hadn't paid your bill, I'll give you three. <laughs> <laughs> You're in bad shape. Of course, you've been in rebellion. <clears throat> the Lord's words come forth. Maybe you're sitting in the beginnings in a pew. It's come forth. You didn't like what it said. You got up and you never came back. You was aggravated and mad because it come against your favorite creature. It come against you inside your heart. You knew. You knew that you knew that it was the Word of God and the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart because the Word was coming forth. And you still said, nope. And you stiffen your neck and keep on walking and all of a sudden a situation comes and you can't hear from God. And you're calling out to Him but you don't want to change your mind. You still want to believe the way you want to believe you're dead set on being stiff neck because you got that spirit. Who's the stiff neck spirit? Remember in Job 41? He stiffens his neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is where Saul's at. So God's not speaking to him. He's trying, he says, but he's not trying to repentance. It says, now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lament, lamented him. I mean, lamented him, excuse me, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those who had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So when he was doing right by what God told him to do, when he was obeying God, what did he do? He put away these people. Like in Acts 19. In Acts 19, when that town, that city got saved, what they did is they took their old sorcery books and their old philosophy books and all their books that had them demon spirits on them and in them as they read because they come through what? They'll come through leaven. What you read, what you hear, they took them and they burned them. The apostles didn't burn them. Paul didn't say, let me give you a book, I'm going to burn them, like a hitter or something. They burned them. They got right with God. They got regenerated, and they said, we don't want this mess no more. We don't want it near us. We don't want it near our children. We don't want it near our grandchildren. We want it out of our house because they knew what was right. When you got people still wanting to mess with these things, mess with horoscopes and mess with fortune tellers and mess with witchcraft and read Twilight and all this other garbage that they want to read, and they still say, I'm preaching, I love the Lord, something wrong. Because when you really got the Holy Ghost, you don't want that mess in your house. Amen. You don't want to be reading on it. Now, you can't control other grown-ups. If they're going to do that, that's between them and God. There's nothing much you can do. That's their business. If they're in your house, you can pray for them. The Lord, do something with them. Stir them up. Get it off of them. Do something. But if it's you, you can control what comes in here. Mm -hmm. Your ears, your eyes, you can control how you do that. 
They were brought in all the books. This is what Saul did. At first, at first, when he was right with God, when he was small in his own eyes, Samuel told him, when he was humble, he burnt, he ran all these people off. He said, I don't want these people no more. That means I'm going to turn them off of my TV. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he had a TV back then. It wasn't a TV like we got. He could look over his balcony and see much of Israel and just look and look at all what's going on. So if he's seen them witches and warlocks and them sorcerers and fortune tellers, he ran them off. He didn't, want to, he didn't want to take that vision in. We ought to turn some of our TVs off with that mess on. Amen. Hello. That's a pretty good point. I ain't talking about running from the TV. I'm talking about not letting that mess in. Because these talk shows have these visitors on sometime, and these visitors are calling up the dead. And most of them have these ghost hunters, and they're called, they got somebody come in, what they call a medium. And they come in, they start calling up the dead. Oh, Frank. <laughs> Here, Sally. Are you there? Oh, I heard a rock throw. There's, there's Frank. I think Frank's over there. All that mess, them demon spirits are playing games with many people across the TV sets everywhere. Yeah. What did I say at the beginning? That spirit of detonation in Python, what does it do? It seems to get a platform. Mm -hmm. oh, what great platform is there but a big TV? Whew, the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's catching on like wildfire. Yep. Now they got a Cajun ghost hunter thing. Uh, I was flipping through the channels the other day. I seen this dude with a beard, Cajun ghost hunters. Oh, yeah. They be eating boudin and chasing ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling alligators and eating boudin and chasing ghosts and calling up. They'll have a medium come in. And sure, when that woman or that man comes in and supposedly talks to the dead, there's activity they catch on camera. Why? Because these people are full of demons. Yeah. And God says, come out and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Amen. Yes. Somebody with a spirit of divination and they're sowing seeds into your ears and into your eyes and all across the network. Woo! All through the movies and everything else. But when Saul was right with God, he ran that out of his life. But when he was not right with God, he sat there and liked that stuff, was you? And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. And his heart greatly trembled. Have you ever had your heart flip-flop? And start beating out of order. What did that Oh, man, a medical term. Rhythmia, cardiorhythmia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it's yeah. called. Yeah. That's yeah. what's happening to him. He's scared yeah. to death. He's like, I know God's not with me because I hadn't been with God. There's a statement right there. I know God's not with me because I haven't been with God. I haven't been talking to the Lord. Hadn't been wanting to talk to the Lord. Matter of fact, I've been wanting to do my own thing. We know many people like that too. Right now they're doing their own thing. They're building their own businesses. They're building their own life right now. They don't want to talk to God. They haven't been talking to God. All of a sudden here comes the situation. And he's like, uh oh. And so he prays. He don't hear nothing. <laughs> he does everything he used to do before. He don't hear nothing. <laughs> so he says, you know what? I don't have time to wait upon the Lord. <laughs> what does it say in Isaiah 40, man? 40.